Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I appreciate you guys taking time out from your day to join me here in my outdoor man cave. Um, I'm actually working on getting everything set back up and uh, in full working order, so... Um, uh, getting all of it, trying to make it look nice out here, get it cleaned up and everything because it, it's it's so much nicer being out here. And now that most of the summer is gone, it's not quite as hot, and we will be having games. So I made broadcast tomorrow night. It'll be 10 o'clock Eastern, so it'll be kind of late. So it'll definitely be kind of cool. But I think I'll go ahead and do the uh, live stream for our preseason game here. Hopefully we'll see a little bit more than what we did um, last week, as far as the television coverage goes, uh, it is 10 o'clock Eastern or uh, 7 o'clock out on the uh, West Coast or uh, 9 o'clock in Dallas. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to get that broadcast together, and hopefully NFL Plus has gotten themselves to be a plus as opposed to a minus, where they're way behind the local broadcast, but we'll, we'll definitely coordinate and get it together. Um, some of the things that kind of drive me crazy is, you know, people will always accuse me of, well, you're just a Dak Prescott lover and, and everything else, this, that, and, the other. and that's fine. I, you know, no matter what you do, people are going to hate you. That's the nature of the beast. I am not on board, I mean, not adverse to having a plan that makes us better. You know, we fall in love with players and things. I mean, I was in love with Roger Staubach and, of course, um, uh, Troy Aikman and things, but eventually at some point, and even Tony Romo. They get old, and it's time to be replaced. And if you have a better plan, by all means, give me that plan. Don't just go out and say, get rid of Dak Prescott. Okay, do the full picture and say, get rid of Dak Prescott, and here's the solution. Don't just say, we'll just draft a quarterback. Because that's not easy, my friend. That's not easy. That's not an actual solution. Say, tank the season. Get rid of Dak Prescott. Go for X player. Okay, that is actually a plan, not a plan that I necessarily agree with, but that would be a plan. And so now you have pile on where it's really convenient to go through with somebody like Zeke Elliott to say, Zeke Elliott, let's get rid of Zeke. Zeke Elliott costs too much money. Okay, all right. I, I hear what you're saying here. I hear what you're saying on that one. Because like today, we have this article that came out, will Zeke, um, will 2022 be Zeke's final year as the Dallas Cowboys? Which it may, it may. However, I'm going to take the other side of this debate and say that it probably won't. And here's the reason why I say this. Because, you know, as we go through here, as we go here through this article, uh, the interesting thing is um, they talk about the cost of Zeke Elliott this year. Okay, now understand the full cost of Zeke Elliott is not Zeke Elliott's fault. The Cowboys put triggers in contracts so that way they can basically shift the money down the road, which is a great idea. We've done this numerous times already with Dak. So Dak Prescott's number this year is 18 million, or is it 19? 19 million. That's his cap number. Last year was 17. Why? Because they use those triggers to kick the money down the road. So then people will look and say, well, his cap number next year is $48 million. That's too much money to pay him. Well, you got to pay the piper at some point. And maybe that's part of the reason why Stephen Jones is not giving out the big contracts. So people will constantly use things against Zeke, but they're not giving the full picture. They will say that his cap number is $18.2 million this year, which it is. And let's go to over the cap. This is what I, I like doing this because I've got, you know, the, the change of cameras. I've got the fresh air outside. And we can look at this. And when we look at this over here, we see Zeke's cap number is 18.2. Part of that number is because you deferred that money as a cap number later because you needed that money to pay others. Okay, his guaranteed money is $12.4 million. It's not in dispute. So we are paying Zeke Elliott a whole lot of money. Now, here's the thing. Let's go out to 2023, okay? And we look at Zeke Elliott and we say, Zeke Elliott is $16.7 million. Wow. 
That's way too much money. Now, let's go back to this article. Zeke Elliott's cap hit, as he puts it, in 2023 isn't much better. It's 16.7. But where $12 million of the money is guaranteed, none of next year's money is. Hey, okay. All right, so we actually have some relief. The Cowboys could shave $10 million of cap money by saying bye-bye to Zeke Elliott. And you say, hey, that sounds great. We can save $10 million by telling Zeke, go. And, and you, you look at this like maybe the Cowboys go on the DeMarco Murray plan where they decide we're going to run you into the ground before we let you go. We're going to get everything out of you, which is possible. That's why you may see a monster year out of Zeke Elliott. But let's go back here for a second. You hear, I'm saving $10 million. I'm saving $10 million a cap room, right? Now, that means that it's still going to cost you $6.7 million. Wait a minute. I saved 10, but it's still going to cost me $6.7 million. So hold up for a second here. Hmm. The best case scenario the Cowboys can do by making him a post June 1st cut, and let's do that. Post June cut is saving $10.9 million and still incurring five point eight. It's right here. So hypothetically, hypothetically. Let's say the Cowboys, you know, after Zeke, let's say Zeke Elliott makes it through the season 16 games. Let's say he gets over 1,000 yards again. Wouldn't it behoove you to say, you know what, Zeke, we're just going to tear up this contract, and how about we offer you $8 million for the season? So technically, if the best-case scenario is it's going to cost us 5.8. If I can say I can add $2.2 million to that number and keep Zeke, doesn't that make more sense? If he goes through the season and he's healthy, has a good season? Because I know people look at him and say he's over the hill. You know, running backs, you know, they don't get better that they are a commodity that you lose on. I get all that. But I sit here and think about Miles Sanders, who, again, you know, says, I'm going to play 17 games, who is missing practice again with a hamstring issue. I look at Saquon Barkley, Saquon Barkley, and say, he's never been healthy but one year. I look at Christian McCaffrey and say, since he got his contract, he hasn't done squat I think of Antonio Gibson, who's one of the young studs, who's got fumbleitis. And I look across the board and say, Zeke Elliott, when we all look at this and say that the offensive line was in shambles and that Zeke Elliott played through a torn PCL, still was only one of seven backs to get 1,000 yards. So my question then is, if your thing is, this is Zeke Elliott's last year, that the Cowboys need to move on from Zeke Elliott. And I know people will say Tony Pollard is the answer, but Tony Pollard is not the blocking running back that you need. Tony Pollard is not the running back who is going to be between the tackles type guy. (coughs) And I dare say Tony Pollard is a guy who has injury history just like most running backs that you need to have more than just one guy. Doesn't it behoove you if the best case scenario you can have is not have Zeke and cost you $6 million? That wouldn't it be better to say, let's add two more million to that and keep Zeke? If, again, the big if is, how does Zeke Elliott do this year? Does he go through the season where he's able to play the whole season, where he has a season where he rebounds. That's my thought. Because if you don't, then 
what is the new plan of attack for the Cowboys running attack? And let's be clear here. It's not like we get rid of a running back and we end up having automatically another guy who is a great running back. Think about Marion Barber, who got a big contract from us and never had a 1,000-yard season, rest his soul. And when we had him, it was a two-back set that ended up getting us the yardage that we need. And see, this is where having Tony Pollard, who by hook or by crook, may become one of your wide receivers as opposed to just being a running back. Um, yesterday, because C.D. Lamb was out, um, we had Tony Pollard admit that this was the most that he's ever played wide receiver. And having Tony Pollard play more wide receiver may prolong his career as opposed to him being a between-the-tackles guy. If you put Tony Pollard as the every-down workhorse back, I guarantee you he will not hold up. But then again, what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job and a voodoo doll who just enjoys sticking a fork in the back of the Eagles. I'll be back later on with some more knowledge for you guys, and I hope that you're having a great Friday. Don't forget, if you are uh, interested in playing on our Fantasy Football League, email us at cowboyjobu, I'm sorry, jobufantasy at gmail.com, and make sure you tune in tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, for our live stream. And I'll see you guys later. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't Hurts. handle the truth! Hurts! The pass! Throws! Pick! Horrible pass. Oh my god. <laughs>